Using the slips properly is a matter of learning a few do's and don'ts. It's not complicated. And remembering a few simple rules can save everyone a lot of grief. Rule number one. Always make sure the drill string has stopped moving before setting the slips in the rotary opening. It's an easy rule to understand and one you must always follow. Letting the pipe carry the slips the last few inches into the rotary table can create a lot of problems. This sudden stop can cause the slip dies to gouge the pipe. Slip die gouges may not seem like much, but remember, a small nick can translate into a washout or a twist off and big costs. What's more, suddenly stopping a long string of drill pipe with the slips can cause the pipe to stretch or elongate like a rubber band. As the string recoils, it can force the slips up and out of the rotary table bushing. With slips out, the entire drill string could drop down the hole. And even if the slips do hold, the pipe could be permanently deformed and cracked just below the slips, resulting in a washout. more rule. When setting the slips, keep them away from tool joints because the slip dies can damage them. Two or more crewmen should work the slips in accordance with the IADC Accident Prevention Manual. If three are working, each person should use one hand to grip each slip handle. If two are working, one crew member should use both hands to grip two of the handles while the other uses one hand to grasp the third handle. Regardless of whether two or three persons are on the slips, lift them using your legs, not your back, like these guys are doing. And make sure your footing is secure. You don't want to slip or slide. Grasp the slip handles, palm up, and always remove your hands as soon as the slips are set to avoid hand injuries. Never place your hands here, or here, or here only here. Keep your hands on the handles, palm up, and pay attention to what you're doing. You don't want to lose a finger or hand or botch the drilling job. Looks cool, doesn't it? But don't do it. Kicking the slips in place is a big no-no. Kicking the slips in could harm the pipe, the slips, and you. Always set them in place properly with the handles. Never tie a rope to the handle of the slips. It can wedge between the slips and pipe and keep the slips from properly gripping the pipe. When pulling pipe out of the hole, don't let the slips ride the pipe on its way up. It's tempting to let the pipe sort of help you lift the slips, but riding slips can fall off the pipe and onto the rig floor, damaging the rotary, the pipe, or the slips themselves. Here's the way to do it. Let the driller pick up to get the weight of the string off the slips. Then lift the slips clear of the rotary opening and set them back on the floor. Let's review handling the slips. Stop the drill stem, then set the slips. Three crew members on the slips, one hand on each handle, palms up. For two crew members on the slips, this is okay too. Great, no one kicked the slips. Everyone used their legs to lift, and they set the slips with the right height of pipe above the rotary, about two and a half feet or so. Let's watch them remove the slips. One crew member on each handle palms up. Lift the slips, no riding the pipe. Set them back on the rig floor, out of harm's way. It's not hard, it just takes practice and teamwork.
Since the slips are a major factor in keeping the drill stem in top condition, it's important to keep them in good order. Wearing safety goggles, physically check them before each trip. Clean them first with a wire brush so you can easily examine them. First, check the dies for wear. Make sure the teeth are sharp. The dies are properly secured in the correct position and that they are not chipped or broken. If a die is broken or loose, don't replace just that one die. Good practice calls for replacing the entire set. And don't try to resharpen worn dies. You could damage the pipe and the slips. Here's how. New slip dies penetrate the pipe causing damage. Worn slip dies carry no load at all. Slip dies carrying the heaviest load are forced back into the slip body, damaging the slips themselves. So when replacing broken or worn dies, replace the entire set. Also, thoroughly clean the die grooves so that the new ones fit properly. Discard the old dies so that they can't be used again. Periodically, you should perform what's called a slip test. A slip test tells you whether or not the slips are gripping the pipe evenly. It's the best way to determine the degree of rotary equipment wear. Crew members should do this test about every three months or so and each time a new master bushing or slip set is put into service. Here are the steps to follow to conduct a slip test. First, wait until you have sufficient hook load to conduct the test. The string weight should be greater than 100,000 pounds for the test to be accurate. Then, wrap two layers of waterproof paper around an area of the drill pipe tube free of slip insert marks. Place the rotary slips around the wrapped section of the drill pipe and lower the pipe and slips at normal setting speed. Apply the full hook load to ensure correct markings on the test paper. Hold the slips together and raise the pipe. Remove the slips. Remove the test paper carefully and evaluate the results. A full 16 and a half insert contact indicates that the master bushing and slips are good. No further action is needed. If the insert contact appears only at the top section of the test paper, it indicates that the slips or master bushing are worn. Redo the test with new slips. If it indicates full contact from top to bottom, the old slips are probably bent or damaged. They should be discarded with a toes cut to prevent them from being reused. But if a second test shows partial insert marks on the top of the test paper, the master bushing, insert bowls, or rotary table will have to be inspected for wear. To check the outside of the slips to make sure they are not distorted, place a straight edge on the back center of each slip segment and on the face of the slips. If the slips are bent or worn, the straight edge will not make full contact with the slips. The back of each slip element should be straight and smooth. Check the master bushing bowl with a straight edge just like you did the slips. Place the straight edge against the taper of the bowl. It should have good consistent contact. If it does not, the bowl should be replaced. Regularly inspect the hinge pins on the slips. Each segment should move easily, but not too loosely. Too much play in the hinge pins can cause the slips to close unevenly around the drill stem. And if the slips don't close properly around the pipe, the drill string could drop into the hole. Bad news. To keep the slips functional and the hinge pins moving freely, but not too loosely, keep the slips clean and lubricate the hinge pins. Coat the back of the slips with a good quality anti-seize lubricant or compound. The lubricant ensures that the slips go into and out of the rotary with no binding or hanging up. Take care to lift and set the slips correctly. Never drop or kick the slips into place. Remember, the slips, drill stem, and master bushing work together to suspend the drill string in place. If any one of these elements is not in good condition, it can destroy the others. The slips may be a small part of this equation, but they are essential.
subscribe to my channel and also press this bell icon so you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone.